switch over to live view. I'll pull it down a little bit. So what we're looking at right now is a 11.0 release um, server. Uh, this is actually gitlab.com. Uh, so you too can, can be on this server. Uh, and I've created an application that is just a blank app or project rather, which is going to become an application, a spring app. It's a very simple application for, for our demo purposes. There is some configuration that was done ahead of time here, um, which is part of just getting set up so that you can go fast. Uh, that includes setting up the Kubernetes cluster, which I won't go into the detail of here today. Uh, that also includes uh, enabling auto DevOps. Now, auto DevOps can be enabled server-wide. Uh, that is up to you if you're administering it. Um, and uh, otherwise, it can be uh, turned on at a, on a project level basis. So this system, as you see, has auto DevOps enabled already and Kubernetes configured already. Now, looking at the project, you see that this is an empty project. There's nothing here right now. So there's no repository. It's just set up and ready to go. So when that happens, GitLab gives you a few uh, pointers, a few pieces of text that'll help you get going if you already have something. So this is our step one, so to say. So I already have some code. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this so that we can pull that up into the repository. And we will switch over to the terminal. So this is my code, very simple application, just a Java Spring Hello World. I'm gonna go ahead and paste in that code, or the command lines rather. And that should push the code up to here. So now going to our repository and looking at our files, there they are. Now you'll notice this is, as I said, simple. There is uh, no Docker file. There's no CI CD configuration of any sort, uh, just um, XML, JSON, and some source code. Let's go ahead and pop into the source code and make a small change. Let's say the Hello World controller. Now with GitLab, for those of you that use it, you already know, for those of you that don't, uh, you can edit files in place in the web browser. I can simply say edit. But we've also got this brand new spanking really cool web IDE that John was talking about. Uh, it was released uh, before 11.0, but we're continuing to enhance it. In this web IDE, I can work on multiple files as you'd expect. Uh, I'm just gonna simply edit this file. So we've got a to-do line here. I'm gonna go ahead and take that out because we're going to make the change. It says personalize it. So let's say hello from GitLab. Let's give ourselves a few exclamation points because we're super excited here. I'm going to commit those changes. Right away, the web IDE gives me the diff so I can see what I've changed. Very nice and handy. Uh, I'm going to stage my changes that I want to commit. Add a simple commit message. And here I have some options. I could push it to master branch. That's not really the flow that we like to follow. I can create a new branch and, and push this to that, uh, or commit this to that. Uh, or I can create a new branch and put in a merge request so that we can start working on it. People can have a conversation about it. We can track uh, all the activity around it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. It auto generates a branch name for me, and I'll go ahead and commit. So step one, I've put some code and I've made a change. This is my, my merge request. I'll go ahead and assign it to myself. We see I'm pushing uh, or I'm merging this branch with master. I'm gonna go ahead and select remove source branch when merge is, is accepted so that we can kind of keep our repository clean because once it's merged, I don't need it. And then I will submit. Now here's where the exciting part happens because here is where auto DevOps is kicking in. You see now there's already a pipeline that's running here. Okay, I didn't do anything, didn't configure any pipeline. Uh, let's go take a look at that pipeline. So 
this is all part of auto DevOps. And we're going to spend a minute here talking about all these pieces. The build is the first thing it's going to do, of course. We'll go pop into that. And while that's running, so what this is doing is this is taking Heroku uh, build packs and it's using those to figure out what is the code that I'm trying to build. It's building that code and then it's building an appropriate Docker image for that code. If I had a Docker file in my repository, then our DevOps would pick that up and use that instead, but it's using the default one uh, since I don't have a Docker file. So that's going to go do its thing. We'll pop back to the pipeline. For a little minute here, we'll talk about the test area. So there was a big list of things that John talked about um, and that, that we had listed there. Uh, around what Auto DevOps is doing, all those functionalities. So here's where a lot of that comes into play. In parallel, once the build is complete, uh, Auto DevOps will pick up and the pipeline will do code quality uh, checks. So it'll do static analysis. Uh, it will do a container scan because we want to make sure that the application environment that we are putting our application into does, is also clean of vulnerabilities. The pipeline will also do dependency scanning uh, to look at all of the dependent libraries and things that our software is pointing to and make sure that those are also not vulnerable, or if they are, it will flag those so we're aware. The new piece license management is also in there. It's going to look at those dependencies and make sure that there's no licenses that are new that we're not aware of. And if they are, that they uh, that they match our policy about what we're okay with. So we can look at those and say, well, I don't really want that viral OSS license as part of my, my uh, software. It's going to also do static um, application security testing to make sure that we don't have vulnerabilities uh, in our code. And then the build pack will look at the tests that it understands for the language and run those as well. Once all of these are complete, it will move on to creating the review app. Now, I'm going to actually do the baking show thing here because uh, this build will take probably longer than we want to sit and watch it. So I actually have my cake in the oven right here. This is basically the same app. It's a spring app. Uh, it's just one that I did earlier. It has a pipeline similar to the one that we were just looking at, except this one finished a while ago. So as it runs, it collects all the information so you can get access to all of the details, but it also creates a report and attaches it to the MR as a artifact that you can get and look at. The review app in this stage, Auto DevOps is looking at the application and the Docker container that the instance it was put in. And it's looking at the Helm charts that are default part of Auto DevOps and figuring out how to deploy this into an environment so that we can have a live application that we can get to on the network and actually look at so all of our stakeholders can see the app, the changes live on a system that is an ephemeral system, which we will eventually throw out. And this happens for every, every time that our DevOps pipeline runs. And this is incredibly useful because it allows you to see for real, in real life with your eyes, the working application before it gets into production. If you have your own Helm chart in your uh, repository, then Auto DevOps will pick that up and use that to deploy your application in the way that you would like. So at this point, we have a live application running, and that means that we can do further work like dynamic application security testing, which Auto DevOps, the pipeline, then goes on to do. This also means we can do some performance checking. So we use uh, uh, site speed IO to check browser speed response time. Okay, 
But to really see the beauty of all of this pipeline running, let's go back to the merge request. So this, like the previous one, is the merge request that kicked, kicked off the pipeline and got everything rolling. Now you notice there's a line here that got added that says this, the result of this merge request was deployed to this environment. And by the way, here it is. So I can open that up and I can see my changes. And if this was a full app, I could go dig into it and, and interact with it. This is just a static web page. It's also been kind of watching it and doing some checks on the memory because it's sitting on our server and we have access to it, to, to all of that. So we can get a sense for how the server is behaving with, or really how the app is behaving on the server with the new code changes. So we had a spike when we first set it up. We have information about throughput and, and all of this, and also on the Kubernetes cluster itself. So that's useful stuff, but let's keep going, right? All of those tests that ran, right? The output has to be somewhere. Well, we think the best place is right here in the merge request so that you can, the stakeholders, whoever's deciding on whether to actually merge can look at all of this and make a decision. Remember, I, I, I removed that to do comment. So code quality picked that up and, and liked that. So I got a point for that. And it tells me, hey, good job. Got the to do out of there, got that fixed. If it was negative code quality, it would also put that in there and I would understand more closely what the issue was. The performance metrics uh, degraded, that's sad. Only by a point though. So I'm gonna say we're okay there. Security scanning. Now in this case, it actually found a vulnerability, darn it. So we can look at that and we can get more detail. So um, SAFT found this problem and actually looks like uh, SAFT found a, a, a vulnerability as well. So I can pop that open. I can go get more information about it uh, there's a summary, but then there's also links to uh, to the source information. I can actually go look and have it have GitLab show me where in my files did it find a problem. So I have context to where the issue is. I can make a decision to dismiss this vulnerability for this project, so this is like whitelisting it, uh, or I can create an issue from right here, which will fill in the details and then become a task that we need to work on. I'm gonna go ahead and just ignore that for now. And this will be similar. And then here's license management. It said, hey, I looked and I did not detect any new licenses that you need to be concerned about. So fantastic. So this looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and merge it. So that's going to go ahead and kick off a new pipeline. And this pipeline looks a little bit different. Similar, but different, because you'll notice now it's not going to a review app. It's going to production. So this is auto DevOps and continuous deployment at its best. I can have my checkpoint and then send it through to production uh, and it will go ahead and studiously do that for us. Now, let's go take a look at the environments under operation since we did deploy earlier on this particular server. So I can see I have one instance right now. And I can go and look at that live as well. This is, again, a different server before the deployment because I just merged, right? I can also get to the monitoring information from here. including the Kubernetes cluster. And you can also put custom monitoring in here as well to look at other things that you're interested in watching. So a few last pieces. 
let's say you're looking at this and you're saying, this sounds pretty good, but I'm not ready to push straight to production um, yet. I, I want to I want to have my hand in there. And that's not a problem. We got you covered. So if you go under settings and CICD, one of the configurations for Auto DevOps is to say, automatically do everything up to staging, but then stop and let me make a manual decision into production. So that's an easy change to make. I'm going to go ahead and just kick off another pipeline so we can see the difference. I'll not worry about that one that's running. I'm going to go to master so that it will go to production. And so now you see similar pipeline goes to staging automatically. But then for production, we actually have an incremental rollout where I will need to select what I want to do here. Uh, there's also the ability to go in and customize the auto devops script directly where you can enable for example canary deployments uh, and alter other parts of it and use that as your template your framework to make your own pipeline and that is in quick summation auto devops